Good morning, everybody. Uh, today is the first video I'm shooting. I'm trying to shoot some short videos that show you common use cases uh, for HiByte and kind of how to do it, walk you through the setup. So this use case is around taking SQL data and pushing that into the UNS. So this could be data from an MES system, from a maintenance system, and you want to get that into the unified namespace, unified namespace in this case, an MQTT broker, so other applications can access it. So quick jump in. Uh, I have HiByte version 1.4 beta running in uh, a Docker container. So everything you see is going to be available in the 1.4 release in a few weeks here. Uh, and if I jump here, you'll see this is the event log, and I'll jump back here to look at errors and other things that are going on. I have SQL Server installed locally on my host, uh, and I've got some tables in here. In this case, we'll look at the orders table, which is defined here. And then I have uh, MQTTFX installed connected to a local Mosquito broker, which is my UNS for this case. And then HiByte is blank. So let's jump in. The first thing we want to do in HiByte is create the connections. So we're going to connect into SQL Server. Now this is a little weird host.docker, I think, dot internal. So I'm using a, an address to get to the my local host from my Docker image. In your case, this would be local host or this would be an IP address. And that's the default port. And then I have a test database uh, with Aaron, super secret password. And I submit that. So my connection's created. Now I want to define an input and test that connection. So I'll define an orders input and I'll hit object explorer. And what this is doing is it's grabbing all the tables and stored procedures in the database. Basically this view here. Now if that doesn't work, I would jump into my event log and look at the error message that was produced when I try to do that browse, but it's working for me. And if I select orders, I can see these are the columns uh, available in that database. So there you go. And then I can write any SQL query I want here. Uh, select everything from orders. I only have two rows, so this isn't a very big query. Uh, HiByte will return the first result for me and show me the data for that. If I had a lot, you know, I might want to do something like top five or limit it. But in any case, I've browsed, I've grabbed the input, read it, everything looks like it's it's working, so I'm going to submit. Now the second thing we want to do is create a connection to our UNS. In this case, that's over MQTT. I'm going to use the same host.docker.internal weirdness, uh, and I'm going to use port 1883, which is the insecure uh, port, default port for MQTT. Client ID, now I would I would recommend leaving that blank unless you have a use case for it. And that's only because if you don't, if you leave it blank, it gets assigned a random GUID as your client ID, which is almost guaranteed to be unique. If you set it and someone else, some other application in your test environment uses the same client ID, most brokers will drop you. And it's kind of hard to troubleshoot those use cases. So I'd recommend just leaving that blank and we're not using security or anything here. So all that's good. Uh, we're gonna create an output. So we'll call it orders. And we'll put it on a topic called orders. And then we'll just leave this as default, but depending on what the broker supports and your level of uh, reliability, you'd set that accordingly. All right, so now I've got my input and my outputs, and my connections, inputs, and outputs. The first thing I always do is I'm just going to create a flow to test it. So I'm going to say orders to UNS. And I'm not using any modeling in HiByte to do this, right? I'm just going to grab the raw input and the raw output and map the two together. And I'm going to say, just back it off a little bit. Every five seconds, I'm always going to trigger and I'm going to send all the data. And I always like to start my flows as disabled and then I'll turn them on. So I'm going to turn it on. And if everything's great, you'll just see that the flow started, no error messages. And if I bring over the MQTT broker, you'll see even better, uh, the messages are coming through. And this is basically an array of the rows. Right, And you'll see, interestingly enough, ID is not included in the second one because if you remember, ID is null, so there's no value, so we'll just not include that. But we're taking the raw input and just mapping it over to uh, the UNS in a JSON format, an array of, of the rows, without any modification. So this tells me I've got my connections configured, all that's working. Now let's go and actually model the data. So I'm going to turn this off, and I'm going to create a data model. Uh, I'm going to call this orders row. It's pretty generic, but I'm going to use it to model the orders table. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to make it look uh, just like the original, right? Which is kind of lame, but it'll drive the point home. So I'm order count. So I'm just going to copy the the uh, the names over into the model. Order date, start date. Uh, complete date. And then we had an, an ID that was used. Now, if I want to be super rigorous, right, I could set the actual data type. Any just means whatever's coming from the source I'm going to use. I could specify whether or not it's array, and I could I could specify it required. Now, interestingly enough, since one of these rows doesn't have as a null ID, uh, which we saw here, if I set this to required, then when that row went to run through the transformation, it would fail. So, so I actually don't want to set it to required because it's not a required field in the database. But if you wanted to be more rigorous, you, you could do that here. So that's that's my model of the orders table. And what I'm going to do now is just create an instance and just leave it orders orders row instance. And this is where I'm going to do the mapping. So now I'm going to grab my input and expand it. These are the two rows that are in the table. They have the same schema. We'd show a maximum of 10, and then we'd just say there's there's more in here if you'd want to see it. But I can pull any one of these. You'll see the second one doesn't have the ID again because it's null. Uh, but I can pull this and see the data, and I'm just going to drag this over. Order count, order date, start date. Now, pretty. This is pretty boring so far, right? <laughs> but so what this is doing is it's saying, okay, I'm going to go query the database, return in this case two rows of data. I'm going to take each one of those rows and I'm going to run it through this transformation and then output it. So I'm going to hit submit. I'm going to go to the flows again, and instead of connecting directly to the input as the source, I'm going to select the instance that I've done the mapping to. And then, again, I'm going to jump out, and I'm going to turn it on. And miraculously, let me clear the buffer. This is pretty anticlimactic, because what we're going to see in a few seconds here is it looks exactly the same, right? Nothing's changed. Uh, so we're running this through the high byte model, but we haven't modeled it any any differently. So let's do something slightly more exciting. So I'm going to go into the model, and I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to go into the instance. I'm going to say order count. And this is probably fraudulent, but I'm going to multiply that by a thousand, by a hundred. <laughs> so everything's going to be a hundred x what we said it was. And I think I could rename the columns to here if I wanted to. Uh, I could add additional columns and map in OPC data or data from other sources, but you kind of get all that. I'm just going to say, um, I'm just going to multiply this number to show you that it's actually running through the transform. So I'm going to turn it on, and all of a sudden, you can see our production has skyrocketed, right? We're crushing it now. So you can see we went from, uh, but we could do anything. We could rename columns. Uh, we could you know, change the data types. We could do whatever we want, and that's a, that transformation is applied to every row of the table. Um, so that's pretty cool. There's more you can do, but we want to keep these videos short. So that's just an example of I'm going to take SQL data, I'm going to map it into the UNS. Uh, we have stuff where you can index the SQL data, so you can do things like grab, get me new data, data uh, newer than this ID or timestamp. That that'll be in one four. Uh, and you can do more advanced queries. You can do really cool things, too, like in your actual expressions. Um, say there was an asset ID in here. You could write code that, that looped through the rows. And this isn't what it's going to be like. But for each row, uh, it would be like if, I mean, I'll do a video on this, but if um, asset ID equal to 1, 2, 3, uh, then I'm going to grab the, uh, the running hours field. And again, this isn't the exact syntax, but you get the idea where I can return multiple rows and then create an instance for each asset in the table and create my instance based on just that row. So I can queue off a certain row to pull data from that. Um, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself, but that, this is the simple example of getting SQL data into the UNS um, through Hybyte. Hope that was helpful.